So if you're watching this video, then you probably already have a laptop cooling pad or you are planning to get one. Are they actually effective or are they just a myth to get you to spend more money on things you don't necessarily need? I've been using a laptop cooling pad for quite a while. I never had one to begin with. Then I bought one, then I bought another one, and then I switched to a laptop stand all over the span of about two years. And here is everything I found out. Now I'm going to preface this video by saying that there are a lot of videos on YouTube talking about the technical specifications, rotations, temperature, and so on and so forth of the laptop cooling pads. This is not one of those videos. I'm going to be telling you about my experience using laptop cooling pads. Everything said here is subjective and based on my opinions. So don't come after me in the comment section saying I said this or I didn't say this. These are just my opinions. I'm going to tell you about how I use my laptops, both the previous and the current one, what the laptop cooling pads did, and why I ended up abandoning them all in all. One of the most frequent comments I got on my previous video about this topic was the fact that laptop cooling pads are effective based on the model of the laptop that you have. And while I don't completely agree, I do see the sense behind it because some laptops have their exhaust vents at the bottom, meanwhile some have them by the sides, and so on and so forth. The HP Envy 17 2015 model that I was using for the last two years was one of those laptops that had the exhausts by the side. So using a laptop cooling pad at the bottom did not really seem to be very effective. The first laptop cooling pad I got was a very cheap one for about $5. It wasn't really anything effective, the fan wasn't really fast, and it barely even served as a laptop stand. I don't know if it was just my optimism that blinded me, but I could have sworn that for the first couple of days my laptop started performing a lot better than it normally would. That was a lie. My HP NB17 at the time was really old and I was pushing it with my workload of video editing, light gaming, and occasional content consumption on YouTube. Whenever I was editing on Premiere Pro, the laptop would always stutter or lag or just completely crash and shut down. This was something I attributed to the laptop running hot and probably thermal throttling of the processor or whatever. Even if that was the case, it seemed that the laptop cooling pad I initially got was not going to fix it. So I eventually scrapped that cooling pad and decided to go for a good old fashioned propping your laptop up against some objects. That was something some other viewers of my previous video mentioned as well, as some people only propped up their laptops against egg crates or books and it seemed seemed to help them with, you know, help and it seems to help them with heat dissipation as the exhaust just needed to be elevated from the table so that the air could be expelled efficiently. So I thought, you know what, why not give it a try? I got some big medical textbooks and put my laptop on top of them and while it actually did help with the dissipation of heat as the vents were left clear, it did not really solve the problems I was experiencing with the lagging and the glitches and the overheating. And just as any other person would, I figured, gee, my laptop isn't performing any better right now. I think I should go get another cooling pad. That was a very interesting decision to make, but I wasn't gonna make the same mistake I did last time. This time I actually looked for a laptop cooling pad that was also a laptop stand. So at least I got double the functionality all in one. Now granted, the new laptop cooling pad I got seemed to work better than the previous one as the fans rotated a bit faster, but they were also quite a bit louder. This is a big problem I had with cooling pads because trying to record YouTube videos while your laptop's fans are on full blast and your cooling pad is blasting on full blast as well is practically impossible. Over time, I realized that this wasn't a good solution as well because while it was a good laptop stand, it just did not serve to reduce the temperature as much as I had hoped. And like I mentioned earlier, the HP Envy's exhaust vents were by the side, so blowing air to the bottom might not have been the most effective way to cool the laptop down. However, some of you might ask, what if my laptop's cooling vents are at the bottom? That might not be the best solution, however, because imagine blowing air into the hole you're supposed to squeeze air out of. That's not what I meant. H Think of it like this, you have a car and it has an exhaust. I mean, unless you're RJ and you have a Tesla. But if you're <laughs> but if you have a regular gas car, imagine taking the lawn blower and shoving it into the exhaust and blowing air in there. What do you think is gonna happen? 
but I might be wrong. So feel free to correct me in the comment section below. And while you're there, let me know you're still watching at this point by leaving a computer emoji comment. And if you've been enjoying the video, then liking and subscribing would go a long way to helping the channel. So the gist of the entire story is, I did not really get that much benefit or that much use from using a laptop cooling pad with my HP NV17. Now, I did mention that I have a new computer right now, and that is the Lenovo Legion 5. I know you can't see it, it's, it's behind me, trust me. And uh, yeah, the laptop has been amazing so far, a significant upgrade over my HP NV, but it also does tend to blast the fans when it's in performance mode or when I am editing or playing video games. My solution for this was to not get another cooling pad. Shocker, I know. What I did instead was to get a laptop stand. Now, a laptop stand does tend to have a bunch of advantages by itself as number one, and which is the most important for me, it is quiet. It literally makes no noise. It's just a metal stand for your laptop. The one I have here has some holes on the legs as well for your cable management, and it has some soft pads for you to place your laptop on top of. It offers a decent viewing angle in case you want to use your laptop as a secondary monitor, and I have honestly just found it to be quite enjoyable to use. It's also detachable, having no screws or small bits, so it's portable and you can take it wherever you are going. This is what I would recommend getting if you have a similar workload to mine, where you do a lot of editing, maybe some gaming here and there, and just a lot of content consumption. I mean, if you feel like your laptop runs really, really hot and a laptop cooling pad will put your mind at ease, then please, by all means, don't hesitate to get one. I would just stay away from the very cheap ones, save up some money and get a more high-end version with more fans and with better cooling capabilities. It might work for you, didn't work for me, but that's just my use case or that's just my experience. I would say the laptop cooling pads were really popular once upon a time, especially with gamers and people who love to do intensive things on their laptops. But if your workload isn't that much, then I would say a laptop stand might give you better value. It also helps your laptop's air circulation as the vents aren't being blocked by the table anymore and it has the advantage of not adding any extra noise into your room. But let me know what you think in the comment section right below the like button. Do you still swear that cooling pads work or are you considering getting a monitor stand now? And if you enjoyed this video, then you can check out the previous video I made about laptop cooling pads or one of the videos in this playlist. But before you go there, subscribe. The first laptop cooling pad I got was a very cheap one for about five or $10. Crashes or glitches or Okay. And probably thermal throttling of the pro and probably thermal throttling of So please sapakara sarakabar sabarakarai sarakap whatever. Please sap sarap I want to reach one million likes. So please sarapak sarapakara sarapakara sarapaka sarapakara sarapakara. Okay, thank you.